Howdy folks, Tricky B here from Tricky B Build Stuff. Today I'm going to be building a Bilbo Baggins pipe. Well folks, now I'm starting to get ready to drill. Uh, I've got my, my circles laid out here. I just use a compass for this, a bunch of concentric circles to try to get to the center because I don't know exactly where this is going to land. I'll use a 13 16 to come in here. <clears throat> Right now, I'm drilling the tenon hole with this little Forstner tenon uh, bit that I got. I marked the center point. I've got this all lined up, and it's ready to go. Okay, I've switched over to a 1 8 inch um, bit here. This one's a Brad Point bit, so it doesn't wander at all. It's brand new, uh, nice and sharp. And I've reset the angle a bit here. Um, also, I was totally unhappy with what happened on this side. It, it, it didn't quite fit, so I've sanded this off at a slightly different angle now. So that's why all my circles are gone. I'll have to redraw this in a second. One thing I'm doing here, which I, I haven't done before, is to come in at a different angle. So this bit is going to come straight down like this. But if you notice, I drilled the tenon perpendicular to this surface. So that's more like this. So the reason why I have to come in at a different angle, as you can see pretty clearly here, is if I, if I go perpendicular to this surface and go straight down the middle, you know, um, in line with the tenon, I'm gonna come out the bottom of the pipe. So these pipes are all drilled at a slightly different angle. You can watch everybody's Bilbo video. They're all drilled at a slightly different angle. Most of the people drill them by hand. Um, and sometimes they'll even drill partway through here and then come in through the bowl and drill the rest of the way there. I think I can do it here. I think that'll go there nicely. And my spade bit will come in perpendicular to this new surface, which I've, which I've tilted some from before so that I'm drilling more this way than this way. Um, and the two will meet up right around in here. I've set the depth of this so it stops right at that apex. And we are ready to drill. smokes a little bit. This is good hardwood. All right, next step is set up to drill this side. All right, now I've changed out to my 13 16 spade bit. I've put this in so I'm nice and vertical on this line. I have found the center and I've set the depth to be just about right. I also clamped in, uh, oh you can't see that can you? Let me go down a little bit with the camera. Okay. I've also clamped in the vise to the table. Um, these spade bits have a tendency to chatter around and sort of knock the wood back and forth. Um, and you really can't hold it steady with one hand. You know, it slides around. So I've learned that you really need to, uh, you need to clamp this guy down once you've got him in the spot that you like. Okay, I'm gonna have to start the vacuum for this. Um, get that. Got it. I don't know if you can see. You can't see. But I got it right on. Right, I've cut myself off an inch and a quarter of uh, 5 16 inch diameter Delrin rod. This is what we're going to use to hook the two together um, for the tenon that goes into the stem and then into the, into the uh, pipe stummel. I've put my 1 8 inch Brad point drill bit back. I've clamped this in straight up and down. I use the drill bit to align it. 
I tried the trick where you put the drill bit upside down into the drill chuck and then bring it down and clamp it so that it's perfectly in line and then, and then um, put the Delrin rod up in here and basically bring the rod down onto a clamped drill bit. But I could not get the drill bit to be straight. It is, this one's too fluted. When it clamps on it, it goes crooked. So maybe that works on a different kind of drill bit. Um, I don't know. But the brad point is supposed to keep it from moving around. I've, I've tapped it around in a bunch of different directions. Try to get it perfectly centered. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered, but it helps. <laughs> Pretty good, a little off to the side, but that's okay. It's not exactly centered at the other end. Whoa, there we go. I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, that's pretty good. The hole I drilled into the pipe isn't exactly centered at the other end either, so that should work out nicely. Now I'm just going to uh, take the edge off of this a little bit with some files or sandpaper, and then I'm ready to drill the pipe stem to take that and then glue it in. Now I have put my bent pipe in here. Um, I've used a square to get it into this into this clamp approximately vertically. Um, as you know, I, I sanded it in kind of a taper, so it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be close enough. Um, once the two pipe, the pipe and the stumbler are together, you know, you can do some final sanding to make it look perfect. Uh, I've got my hole cutting, or my tenon cutting Forstner bit. Moved a little bit on me. There we go, right there. Um, back in here, I've got about a half an inch, it's about a half an inch, half an inch to the depth to the shoulder from the flat part to the shoulder. Uh, I'm not sure, you know what, I'm not sure that these teeth aren't going to hit this. I think they will. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, they might not, so let's give it a shot first. So that is now ready for the for the Delrin rod to be inserted, and uh, that's the next step. So let's take the Delrin rod. You know, one thing I like to do because these holes are never quite perfect is I have here a set of uh, of uh, countersink bits. This is a what's called a quarter inch countersink. I guess that makes this a quarter inch in diameter. And I go into the end of the Delrin rod that's going to be put into the, the stem, and I just spin it a little bit by hand um, to create a little cone in there. It's very soft. So, yeah, you can see, uh, maybe, yeah, you can see that I've got a little cone in there. I've also chamfered the edges, like I said. So one side's going to get glued into this pipe now. Now what I'm going to try to do, if we can see this, let's see if we can see this. Let me turn on my little screen here. Okay, so it's hard to see. Yeah, there's not enough light. Let me see if I can get a light. Uh, no. 
There. Okay. Kinda. Um, down at the bottom of that hole, the uh, the air hole, the eighth inch air hole, is a little off center. And I drilled this a little off center. This delta rod, a little off center. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna say, okay, this is at the top. The hole in here is at the top of the big hole. So the top of the stem is, you know, this part here. So I'm gonna to try to make it so that the offset part of the hole uh, comes out at the top of the stem when I glue it in. And that way it'll fit better. So basically, you know, like this. Um, you can see that. So that's up towards the top because it didn't come through exactly in the center. And so that should line up. Now let me do a quick test here. Yeah, decent draw. All right, let's start. Uh, well, let's see. The next step here is I have to uh, I have to I have to sand this with a really coarse paper, the part that's going to go in. Otherwise, the uh, the glue won't stick to it. The epoxy. I'm actually going to be using um, uh, JB Weld epoxy, and the reason for that is that it's um, really high temperature epoxy, and you want really high temperature epoxy. Uh, so. It should work. I've used it on pipes before. It works well. All right, that's the next step. I don't think you have to watch me just mix up epoxy and glue that in and stick it in there, though, so I'm going to stop the camera. Okay, it's going to sit there for a minute. Well, it's going to sit there overnight, really. Now i got to start shaping the stumble. Okay, so now I've finished sanding with my one inch belt sander. I've switched to my large assortment of Dremel tips. I've been using the, uh, the burr tips, uh, the, the sphere and the flame. I've been using the weird 
round thing there and the, and the um, cylinder cutter and I have shaped it to this. Um, it's not too bad. I, I took the belt sander and I put a little bevel on the top here because I think that looks nice. Plus I nicked it a few times with the, uh, with the Dremel tool and that's bad. Um, I may have nicked this edge here, that's worse. It's harder to recover from, but there is a way to do it. Um, I'm going to start sanding next. I have, somehow I got stain on my fingers, which is weird because I wasn't working with stain. I think I just picked up one of the bottles and moved it. Now I've got stain on my fingers, which is like getting on the thing. Um, but, but the next step, I think mostly sanding, uh, mostly sanding. It's coming along pretty well. Uh, there's a little bit of a bump here and here, and, but I'll get out all my sanding tools. I've got my flap wheel um, on the Dremel thing, right? That's the flap wheel there. Uh, I got a monitor over here. I can see what's on the screen. Uh, that's the flap wheel. I got a bunch of little cylinders. Um, and I'll get it sanded. And then after that, I have to carve sort of a floral pattern. And, or it's really like vines. Uh, they all have vines on them. They're all slightly different. Um, if you look at all the YouTube videos and images and things of the Bilbo Baggins pipe. Yeah, I'm not a wood carver. I'll do the best I can. That carving is done um, using these little sort of diamond tip or uh, cutting tools. There's a little dinky sphere. There's a slightly bigger sphere. And then there's kind of a cylinder that comes to a point, like a cone, but not really a cone because it's sort of straight and then it curves into a point. I don't know what to call it. Uh, maybe a flame. Um, yeah, I'll have to work yeah, drawing it on there first just to make sure that I know what I'm going to do. I have some photos that I've printed out, um, but by and large, I'm going to wing it. Woohoo! Different camera angle. Uh, okay, I've sanded it using this Dremel multi-tool thing that I've used before. This sort of, let's see if I can get on this triangle sander thing. It's really useful. Um, I didn't sand it too much because I had to carve it. So this um, has a little flower pattern. And the way it's done is the flowers are recessed uh, in the center. I guess they're, they're really leaves. It's kind of a vine. Um, they're recessed, so, so you dig those out. I've used the small uh, diamond carbide cutter to hollow those out. I found it's best if you, you go straight up the middle and then you work up using the top of the ball of the cutter, not the back. You don't want to try to work up and then work back. You got to flip it around. So you always, you start with a center line, you carve a groove, you know, down the middle, and then you work your way out from there. Next, I have to come around and I have to pull all of this back because this is supposed to be raised. And that's why I didn't sand it too much because I really, I have to grind most of this back to leave a, um, a bumped up vine, almost to the depth of that. All right. All right, I've spent, I don't know, an hour and a half or so, and I've carved this beautiful little vine pattern into here. Um, you can see it's scooped out and raised up. Uh, first, I went at it with this little guy. Let's see if I can focus on this. If I put this here, it'll focus on it. So, um, yeah, a little, little round cutter. And then I went around the outside with this bigger cutter. Um, I went through the leaves again with this bigger round cutter just to smooth out the inside. The other one was good for carving it. That one was good for smoothing it. And then I went around the whole thing with this really narrow diameter. That's maybe a quarter inch diameter. Um, it's not gonna focus, there we go. It's like a quarter inch diameter disc or a drum sanding thing. Oh, so that looks pretty good actually. I just need to wait now for the 
glue to dry, the epoxy to dry, that's holding in the, um, the Delrin rod tenon for the, pi uh, the, uh, the stem. And I can attach that tomorrow and then do the final fitting and, you know, do the final um, sanding. I've only sanded this at 120. Uh, still needs some more, I can feel. I feel it's a little rough still. So spend some more time tomorrow sanding that, getting that perfectly smooth. But that's all I'm going to do tonight. All right. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, it's tomorrow. Uh, I did note yesterday that I had messed up the edge of this. That I had messed up the edge of this just a little bit with the Dremel tool. It skidded across there. So I'm doing this simple fix you'll see in other videos. You take the uh, Forstner with the center bore that you use to drill that. You drill it into a scrap block of wood, you stick a little Delrin rod in there, you cut out a piece of sandpaper, 120 grit, um, and I glued that on with, you know, 3M spray adhesive. And then you just put this thing on here, and you twist a bunch until it's gone. And what that'll do is that'll make sure that you keep this surface perpendicular to the to the rod bore. That way the two sides will come together. Now this rod isn't actually glued in here so I can pop this out and, and do this if I need to. Uh, I'm always shocked at where this thing actually aims. Um, I can pop that rod out. This rod is now glued in place. The epoxy has set. Um, it's too long. I made it intentionally too long. So you can see that much to go on. So I'm going to be taking off a little bit at a time. What I like to do is actually use the one inch belt sander to do that. Um, but I'll just be I'll just be shortening it up a little bit and then trying it and shortening it and trying it until you get it until it fits just perfectly. All right, I'm going to go over to the belt sander to do that.
tiny little hair in between them. So that's nice and fit, really snug. One thing you can see is the stem and the stummel aren't the same shape. And you know, that's expected because I, uh, I did them separately. But I can get that fixed. I will probably end up using quite a bit of the belt sander and then some Dremel tools. I'll get those matched up. Um, I have to get this sort of angle looking right. Um, so I'll bring that in a bit. And of course the sides. Uh, all right. Literally hours later, um, the sanding is done and I've stained it. I've fit it together. Um, I went with two colors of stain as I always do. So what I did was I huh, I filled the middle of these uh, flower, I was calling them flowers, the leaves. I filled the middle of these leaves in with a burgundy leather dye. Uh, and then, you know, I I wiped off any bit that got on, on the, the rim. Um, and then I went over it everything other than that with um, saddle tan. These are kind of like big bottles. I use the same colors on every pipe. The uh, stem and the stummel are of course different woods. The stem is oak, the stummel is um, briar. So they don't quite take the stain really perfectly, but it looks pretty darn good. and. You're supposed to wrap twine around this part here. Um, I tried with a really long, you know, I'm worried if you wrap that, you can't ever take it apart. So I got my really long church warden length um, pipe cleaner and I, I tried that and I fussed a little bit. What it ended up doing inside this hole, oh, look at that, there's a little drip there. Uh, inside this hole, Maybe you can see. Let's see if it'll focus here. If I put my finger here, maybe it'll focus. Eh, it's not going to focus. Darn it. Um, inside there, I, I I reamed it out a little bit. The the hole, the eighth inch hole, I used that um, sort of flare tip Dremel tool cutter thing that I, I used to, to do this outside part here. And I just sort of went in there and out a little, made it wider. And now the um, the pipe cleaner will pass all the way from you know the tip of the stem. It'll it'll come out in the bowl. Now you need a really long one. You need like a 13 inch pipe cleaner. So I think you're going to have to. I mean, even this super long church warden length one isn't quite long enough. It, it's exactly long enough, right? If this was a half inch shorter, I could get it out, but I can't. Um, so I think you're gonna have to use the coil, whoops, bang the tripod. I think you're gonna have to use the coil uh, type um, pipe cleaner. But since you can go from here all the way into the bowl, that means I can wrap this with twine, which is what they're supposed to do. And that makes a nicer transition from the one wood to the other wood. The next thing I have to do is polish this. It's still a little wet. You can see it's all coming off on my fingers as I'm holding it. Um, and that happens when you polish it. Uh, so I'm just going to go over to the polishing wheel. I've never polished oak before. I certainly hope it polishes just like burl, uh, briar, sorry, but I have no idea. Uh, that's set up right behind the camera. I'll turn the camera around and we'll watch that. Okay, so white diamond polishing compound, it's the same thing I always use. I 
don't really know how the polishing is going to go with this area here. We'll see. So the grain up here on the top, you can kind of see, you know, it, it's running this way and it ends there. And those are a little bit sharp because they raised up a little when I bent it. So when I polish, I'm going to make sure the wheel is, is going that way on it. Let's see. So it's going down, so I'll have to hold it this way. Take it apart, get in here. Time for carnauba wax. Now, there was a time I told you never to put your finger in here. That's a lie. I've, I've had enough of them fly across the room that I now put my finger in here and I take my chances because I've never had a broken finger. If you hold on to it tight, you're not going to break your finger. Buffing wheels just don't have that much power. But if you try to hold on to the outside, the wheel will take it and fling it across the room and then you'll be starting over. Uh, something like that. It's, you know, 20 hours of work to make that. You're not going to start over because you don't want to put your finger in it. Uh, I'm not giving safety tips. If you put your finger in it and break your finger, I'm not going to be responsible. But I put my finger in it. I like to live on the edge. Masterpiece, more or less. Looks good. Surprise. This stem took a lot of time to do. I didn't really know how to bend a stem, and now I do. Okay, the final step is to wrap some twine around here. Um, I just did it, and I didn't film it. So now I'm going to show you how to do that. If you happen to make fishing rods, I know this isn't sort of an esoteric thing to do, but but I. I took a class in 4-H with my kids on how to make fishing rods. This is basically how you tie the um, the eyelets, the loops, guides, the, the guides onto the rod. This is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> my nose is running a bit. All you do is you make yourself a loop, okay? If you're right-handed, you know, the loop goes over to the left, really. Make yourself a loop with the end sticking out and you go around a couple of times with the end st sticking out above okay so I'm looping and then I'm crossing over that one pulling it tight right and I'm keeping this guy sticking out above I'm not letting him go under yet the other half of the loop is under right um, so on the third time around, I'm going to go over 
the tip of that loop, right, so that he's sticking out. Um, so he's sticking out between the second and the third uh, loop, right? And then we just keep going around. And we go, we make it tight. It's important to make it tight and, and you pull it tight and you snug it up against the one to the right. You don't want to cross over anything. It's just a nice straight looping. Uh, and you go around for however long you have to go. Hopefully this loop goes past where you had to go. Um, and then eventually you get to the length that you care about. Let's say this is as far as I wanted to go. Then you come around and you stick the end through your loop. Okay, you gotta hold your thumb on there so it stays tight. You stick your end through your loop. Okay. Let's get that all lined up like that. Okay. And then we pull on this guy. See, and he's he pulls that loop underneath. So that guy gets pulled back underneath the end. Like that. And then you cut these off. As close as you can, cut them off. All right. And then you take a lighter, because most rope is um, burnable, and you sort of singe the end there. If this is nylon or some sort of nylon cord, it will actually pull back underneath and you won't see the end. But this is just regular sort of jute twine. Uh, so, you know, I just go around it and singe it a little bit to burn the little hairs off. It gives it a nice sort of, uh, you know, rusticated look. And that's how you do the cord wrap. All right. When you do it on your pipe, you want to have the loop on the bottom here. You can see mine is sticking out a little bit right there. Um, you want to have it on the bottom so that, uh, whoops. Yeah, on the bottom of the pipe is where you do the loop. Not on the top, because then you'll see it. See, so you want the top to be nice and clean and the sides nice and clean. Nobody sees the bottom. So the bottom is where you have the little, the little loop that's cut off and looks good though. There we are, this is done. Um, Two-tone uh, two -tone vine pattern, red leaves, burgundy leaves, a little bit of of twine wrapping here, um, you know, bent stem. There it is, it's ready to smoke. Okay, uh, I said earlier, you know, all the stuff, actually I probably cut that out. So there you go. Um, if you would like this video, you can subscribe. There's a link here coming up on the side. Um, the playlist you want is Turkey Bee Build Stuff. If you want to watch me talk about the weather, you know, I highly recommend Turkey Bee Weather or Not playlist as well, but it really is just me sitting around and talking about the weather, mostly while I smoke pipes. Uh, I get no money for your subscriptions. I'm not monetized, but you know, I get a great deal of satisfaction. The only reason I build these pipes is for the satisfaction I get of having subscribers. Okay, thanks everyone, and we'll see you on the next pipe.